Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new episode. I'm Marcus. Today we're looking at Target, ticker symbol TGT. We'll cover the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, key figures, our key feature, and the technical aspect of the stock. Should we be buying the stock right now? Let's find out. As I mentioned, we're looking at Target, ticker symbol TGT, and they are traded on New York Stock Exchange and are in the trade and service sector. If we go down to the screen, we can see that their market capitalization coming in at $102 billion and their revenue coming in at $106 billion. The PE ratio coming in at 15.6. Now, normally I like stocks that has a PE ratio of 20 or below. So having 15.6, I like it. That is within my range. That's, that is a goal. But guys, when you see a stock with a high PE ratio, that tells you that the market expectation of the stock is high and therefore you might see capital gains on those stocks because there's a lot of investor that is pushing the price even higher because they are expecting better and better numbers. But the overhanging risk here, guys, is that if the company doesn't meet those expectations, we will see the stock price fall. Same thing goes when you see a stock with low PE ratio. That tells you that the market expectation of the stock is low and therefore you might not see capital gains on those stocks because the market doesn't expect much from those, stock, from those stocks. So just keep that in mind. So the profit margin coming in at 6.5%. That is a bit low. Normally, I like companies with a profit margin of 15% or higher. So 6% 6.5% that is too low for me so that is a no price to sales ratio coming in at 0.9 normally I like companies with a price to sales ratio of maximum 4 so 0.9 that is within my range I like it so that is a go for me price to book value coming in at 8 normally I like companies with a price to book value of maximum 3 so having 8 that is just too high for me so that is a no for me so guys if we summarize P ratio Ratio within my range price to sales ratio also within my range but price to book value makes this company overvalued now they pay out a dividend of three dollars and sixteen cents I like it because I like those recurrent income effective return at 1.7 percent that is way too low for me so that is a no but I would like to see a range at least around 2.5, 3%. That would be acceptable. But a higher number, around 6%, that would be great. But guys, I want you to be very cautious here because it could be a trap when you see a stock with a high uh, return because you might might get good returns while you hold those stock, but you might not get a higher price than what you bought it for when it comes time to exit the stock. So make sure to look, across, look at the chart for a, 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 a quite some time and see, is this this stock consolidating meaning that it is just moving up and down uh, for uh, over a period of time or is it moving in a negative trend channel or a positive trend channel be cautious because don't fall in for a trap just because the company has a high effective return okay now the uh, return on equity coming in at 50% I like it because return on equity tells you about a company's ability to create return on their equity. And as for an investor, that means that the company's ability to create return on the capital you invest in them. So seeing that a return on equity of 50%, I uh, like it. So that is a plus. A return on asset uh, coming in at 10.8%. A bit low, but still a good and acceptable number. So I uh, like this. So that is a plus. So the stock is currently traded at $222 per share. And if we go down to the moving average, we can see that we are above the 50-day moving average, but below the 200-day moving average. This signal tells me that there are uncertainty, uncertainty here. It's not a clear signal whether we, still will, we will see the stock price increase or decrease but if we if we take a quick glance on the chart we can see that we have been moving within a positive trend channel before the price broke below those channel and then recovered a bit and we can see here if we glance back a bit that we have reached a, a, a double top formation here and also that the price fell below this area making this a confirmation and we can we saw the price move back down and try to recover but hit the, hit a ceiling and have that sense be moving within in negative trend channel but lately forming a counter trend so we might see the stock price increase further uh, uh, going forward but we'll take a, a closer look at the technical aspect further down but let's jump over to the income statement and what we can see here is that the total revenue went from 71.9 billion dollars in 2018 up to 105.9 
billion dollars and these numbers have been growing steadily every year i like it gross profit went from 20.8 billion dollars down to 8.8 billion dollars and we can see here we fell off in 2019 but has since seen a better and better number so that is a plus net income went from 2.9 billion dollars up to 6.9 billion dollars and these numbers have been improving every year that is a plus i like it now let's jump over to the balance sheet and what we are interested in here is that the current assets versus the current liabilities and we can see that they are not far from being able to pay off the current uh, liabilities so if they were to convert the current assets to cash they are not able to pay off the current liabilities and that is negative so that is a minus and they are far from being able to pay off the total liabilities if we take a look at the total liabilities we can see we, we went from 28.7 billion dollars up to 41 billion dollars and these numbers have been growing steadily every year and we can see an increase between 2021 and 2022 but seeing that these numbers are growing that is negative i would like to see them reduce the total liabilities also reduce the rate which is growing so that is negative and i would also like to see them reduce their short-term liabilities in order to be able to pay off them so that, that's what i would like to see so if we look at the outstanding share we can see we went from 541 million shares down to 471 million shares and this number have been going down every, for the last five years that is a plus so guys what is happening here is that when you see that these numbers are decreasing that means that the company is doing buybacks there that means that there are fewer and fewer outstanding shares in the market making your share of the company increase uh, is, is growing but if it, but if we saw this number increase that means that the company is issuing more and more shares meaning that there are more and more shares available out there making your share of the company decrease meaning that you are being diluted as investor and there's a lot of investors that either skip this part or doesn't know about it because they've been looking at a company's balance sheet and, and they see for instance a company with a strong assets a lot of assets and the debt is not growing that much which is great and the current liabilities greater than the total liabilities which is positive but on the other hand we can see that a company is issuing more and more share which is negative but at the same time that's a way for a company to bring in more capital without taking on more debt so be aware be, be make sure to be to be looking at the outstanding share so seeing that these numbers are decreasing that is a plus i like that but let's jump over to the cash flow and what we uh, and what we are interested in here is that the operating cash flow versus the capital expenditure and we can see here is that the uh, operating cash flow came in at 8.6 billion dollars and the capital expenditure came in at 3.5 billion dollars making it a difference of 5.1 billion dollars which is a plus also that the operating cash flow have have been improving went from 6.9 billion up to 8.6 and this number have been improving we fell off in 2019 but overall trend is positive a bit of fluctuation we fell off again in 2022 but as i said overall uh, trend is positive i like that capital expenditure went from 2.5 up to 3.5 uh, billion and we uh, uh, increased and it fell off a bit in 2020 but and again here uh, in uh, 2021 but overall i like the fact that they they continue to invest in the business even though uh, the, the the trend uh, is not a consistent trend that they are continuing to increase the their investment in the business but they are continuing to invest so that is a plus so i like that but let's jump over to the key figures and what we can see here is that the earnings per share went from 5.3 dollars per share up to 14.7 dollars per share and these numbers have been improving every year i like that revenue per share went from 132 dollars per share up to 224 dollars per share and these numbers have been improving every year that is a plus equity per share went from 21.5 dollars per share up to 27 dollars per share same trend here these numbers have been improving that is a plus we fell off a bit in 2022 but overall trend is a plus dividend share went from 2.4 dollars per share up to 3.2 dollars per share and these numbers have been growing steadily every year i like it because i like recurrent income and also the fact that the income is growing 
every year that is a plus dividend share we can see a bit of fluctuation 46 percent 45 40 30 22 i like this so this is a plus because i like a company that pays out less than 60 percent of the capital because i want some of the capital capital to remain in the business for investments for acquisition and just overall strengthening the business for uncertainty so seeing these numbers i like it gross margin went from 28.8 percent down to 8.3 percent and we can see that it fell off uh, in 2019 but have since seen a better and better development so that is a plus now guys imagine a gross margin of eight percent that basically tells you that uh, for every dollar they, they get they get to keep eight cents of that dollar and still have their operating cost to cover so but i like the fact that we are seeing better and better numbers meaning that they are becoming more and more efficient but also you need to be looking at these numbers and, and compare it across the industry and see how is target doing compared to their competitors but imagine the uh, cost of goods sold on more than 92 percent but i like the fact that they are moving in the right direction so that is a plus operating margin went from five uh, percent up to 8.4 percent we fell off in 2019 but have since seen better and better numbers that is a plus profit margin went from four percent up to 6.5 percent same trend here fell off in 2019 but have since seen better and better numbers so that is a plus return on equity as i mentioned tells you about a company's ability to create return on their equity and as for an investor that means their ability to create a return on their capital you bought to invest in them so seeing that they went from 24.9 percent up to 54 percent and it fell off in 2019 but overall trend have been improving every year that is a plus return on asset went from seven uh, percent up to 12.9 percent and fell off in 2019 but overall trend is positive that is a plus solidity tells you about a company's financial strength for a long term and we can see that they went from 28.9 percent up down to 23.8 percent and uh, we can see that these numbers have been falling we improved a bit in 2020 uh, and 2021 but then fell off a, a, a bit so this is negative i would like to see continuation here but also it's negative because it's lower than what we started off with so that is a minus balance sheet liquidity tells you about a company's financial strength for the short term and we can see we went from 0 0.8 up to 1.12 and also that these numbers have been improving we fell off a bit in 2020 but have since seen better and better numbers but we fell off here and i like the fact that we, uh, the number is higher than what we started off so that is a plus i like that debt ratio went from 2.4 uh, up to 3.2 and we can see that the, uh, the number have increased with uh, they improved a bit in 2020 uh, and 2021 but you can see here in 2022 the, the number grew to 3.2 so that ratio 3.2 basically is telling you that the company had 3.2 times more debt than equity in the business and seeing that these numbers are increasing that is negative so that is a minus guys we have gone through the income statement balance sheet cash flow key figures now over to our key feature which is this uh, stock analyzer and what the stock analyzer is does is that it gives you a simplified holistic overview of the company's performance if you want to dig through the numbers you can dig through the numbers or have the software do the heavy lifting for you if we go down to the screen we can see for instance that the p ratio is below 20 which is positive they pay a dividend which is positive and the dividend payout share is less than 60 percent positive dividend have increased over the past five years positive and the number of outstanding share have decreased positive revenue increased over the past five years positive and the profit margin is below a uh, 15 percent negative but still we saw that the profit margins are improving they're becoming but uh, more and more efficient so that is a plus profit increased over the past five years positive current assets is, is less than current liabilities negative but they are not they are not far from being able to pay off their current liabilities well what they need to do is uh, reduce their short-term debt in order to be able to pay off that that would be amazing a good start by seeing that the 
current uh, liability is greater than current li uh, current assets that is negative solidity decreased over the past five years that is negative and balance sheet liquidity have improved over the past five years that is positive and debt equity ratio increased over the past five years negative and the total liabilities have grown over the past five years that is negative guys as you can tell, it gives you a simplified holistic overview of the company's performance. It, and it saves you a lot of time. And if you want to dig through the numbers, you can dig through the numbers or have the software do the heavy lifting for you. And you can have uh, this software along with everything we've gone through, plus access to our discussion forum, where you'll be able to chat with me along with other members for only $10 per month. So make sure to head over to comments.sc and become a member today, okay? Thank you. But now let's take a look at the technical aspect of the stock. So here we have the chart. Let me just lay down some lines, something like that. We have a support line, something like that. And let me do one more and we can see we have something like that that okay so guys as you can tell we have been moving within a positive trend channel for quite some time we even broke out of that channel and have since seen a higher levels before coming back down touching the support line and uh, then pushing the price even higher before we hit a ceiling over here forming a double top formation a double top formation you can see here and we also that this double top formation confirmed when the stock price broke below this area when we saw here that the price went down and then tried to break above the what used to be a, a resist a support line and then fell back down rapidly but what i want you to be very cautious here is that we have two things to consider we have a gap and we have a double top formation guys every time we see a gap just keep in mind that that gap will need to be filled again meaning that you will eventually see the stock price fall back down in order to fill that gap same thing when you see something like this that means that this gap will eventually need to be filled again meaning that you might you will eventually see the stock price fill that gap but uh, as we have right here that we have this gap and we, it will need to be filled again so we might see the double top formation here confirm and see the price break down and we need to be very cautious here because we are around a support level here so this could be a new key area formation so it could be that we might see a lot of buyers come back in and push the price even higher but third thing to keep in mind is that we have if a triangle formation eventually forming here so even though you buy here because you think there's a lot of investors uh, coming in you also might hit your head over here you see because we have now a resistance level formation here so this could also be a key level uh, area so even though you think that okay this is a great area uh, uh, let me buy and then we hit this area here and then fall back down now if you are patient and hold for quite some time then you might see the stock price go uh, move within the triangle before it pushes above it or if we see any uh, any news on the market that is negative then we might see the stock price fall back down but a different scenario here is that if the, we have the, the gap to, to be filled the double top formation then we then we might see the price even go back down within the channel and to me everything within the channel that is, that is a buying area but in order to have a great margin of safety we want to buy as close as the support line as possible because the closer we are to the support line the more and more buyers will uh, we will encounter pushing the price back up and therefore it's good to keep in mind margin of safety uh, so that's what i would do is keep a closer close eye on what's going on uh, uh, going forward short term because this is a key area to be watching so that's how i would trade the stock how would you trade the stock please let me know in the comment section below and also if you have any questions or stocks you want me to take a look at just uh, let me know okay and if i can be of any service to you i will be happy and i truly hope you have enjoyed this episode and please help me up and give me a thumbs up comment subscribe until next time guys take care bye bye <music>